Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 To the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for his keeping power, blessing us one more time, allowing us to be in his house called by his wonderful name. Aren't you glad to be saved? Amen. Aren't you just glad to be alive? Amen. And we thank God for the opportunity we have to come into his house uh, and to uh, praise and magnify him and to learn more and more of him. To all of those who are watching at home, we say praise the Lord to you as well. Um, we give you um, our utmost appreciation for um, joining us in tonight's uh, dialogue and discourse uh, concerning, amen, the mission and purpose of the church. And as we rather divide the word of truth, hopefully uh, this course of uh, series of, of Bible studies has been a blessing to you. And um, hopefully, I mean, just in today's, you know, devotional <laughs> during uh, uh, our prayer at noonday, we learned so much about uh, the body of Christ and how we are the many members that make up this great body. And so appreciate everybody um, being with us. We have an exciting uh, month, couple months of ministry ahead of us, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're looking forward to celebrating all of our uh, new members on this upcoming Sunday, and uh, we look forward to that. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about that. Amen. Amen for those. Amen. Who um, have chosen to make Bethesda Church their home and have been part of our new members curriculum courses. We look forward to welcoming you with your families, and uh, we're definitely looking forward to that. Also looking forward to um, uh, this upcoming Saturday, before we get to Sunday, uh, refreshing filling uh, for those uh, saints who desire refreshing or uh, those who desire the Holy Ghost and want to be filled. We encourage you to come out Saturday for that as well. And uh, then next Saturday, the 23rd, we have our um, um, we're actually going to be hosting the Family um, and Ministry Empowerment Network. Um, uh, that's going to be doing a day of financial training and development for the saints on that day. So a lot of exciting things. And then the next thing you look up, we've got a bonfire of young people into the month. And then we're looking forward to um, a whole month of ministry. We celebrate 35 years of ministry here at Bethesda uh, in the month of October. So we're excited about what God is doing and looking forward to uh, having great opportunities to fellowship and uh uh, again, it's just, it's just good to be in the house called by his wonderful name. Thank God for a member of the Rory helping us out tonight and Deacon is Monaco and the ones and twos helping us get <laughs> situated. So again, it's just, we're just glad to be in the service one more time. Don't want to belabor the time. Amen. But let's go before our great God in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness, for your compassion, for your loving kindness. We entreat you, O oh God, tonight that you would speak your divine words of truth. We pray, O oh God, that something would be said to stir our hearts to greater works. We pray, O oh God, that you would help us eliminate all distractions, help us to focus on your word, oh God. We pray, oh God, that your word will come alive as we study. Pray, oh God, that you even tonight, oh God, would heal and mend and bring deliverance and clarity and provoke us, oh God, and challenge us, oh God, to be the church triumphant you've called us to be for such a time as this. And we give you all praise, all glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, to the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. You know, already know by now we start each Bible class with a few passages of scripture. So uh, join me in the word of God as we uh, begin in the book of John, uh, chapter uh, number eight, uh, verses 30 through 32. If, it, if there's too much air, let us know. We'll try to uh, shoot digging, digging this Monica the keys and we <laughs> can try to get it aired down for you. But if it's all right. Amen. But John chapter number eight, verse 30, 32, with an over in second Timothy chapter two and three. There's a couple passages that we read and we start each Bible class with. So John eight, amen. Verse 30 to 32. Here we read of God's holy word in John eight. He says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus, to those Jews, which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Let's go over to second Timothy. Chapter number two and verse number 15. Here begin the real of God's holy word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a word that he is not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And over one chapter, uh, chapter number three, verses 16 and 17, uh, we read, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. May the Lord God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Again, we say praise the Lord. Hope again everybody's doing. Amen. Uh, great. Hopefully everybody's encouraged. Amen. And we 
certainly they can praise God again for our mission and purpose. Uh, last few weeks, we've been unlocking that. Amen. We again begin with the understanding that the uh, mission and purpose of the church is that we understand that we exist. Amen. By the grace of God, for the glory of God, and that our chief end and aim is that God would be glorified through us. Uh, that's our purpose for living. Uh, that's our purpose, amen, for our gathering. The institution of the church is designed and structured, amen, so that we, amen, his people, amen, may bring glory to his name and all that we do, all that we never to do, amen, is to give God glory and praise through our lives. Um, the next part that we want to get into, a couple more things that we want to kind of dive into as we unlock uh, the basic purposes of the church is to understand, amen, that the Christian life, amen, the uh, development of the Christian is of the utmost importance. The church exists for your development, that you would understand, amen, the holistic approach uh, to God's plan and purpose for our lives. Let's go again. We expounded upon this on this past Sunday, but John chapter number 10 and verse 10 lays out specifically Amen. God's mission and our mission. Okay. The scripture tells us, amen, that, that, that <laughs> uh, uh, if we even back up, amen, we know that he is the good shepherd. How do we identify the church? Amen. The sheep, amen, hear his voice. He calleth out his own sheep by his name and leadeth them out. This is, again, what constitutes the church. There are those of us who align to the voice of God. Amen. He has a people. And how do we know his people? His people don't follow every voice. His people don't follow every sound of doctrine. His people don't listen, amen, to everything. All right. His voice is distinct and the sheep hear his voice. He calleth his own sheep by his name. I think that's also important. <laughs> ah, he has a name and his sheep, amen, he identifies with that name and he leadeth them out. All right. The scripture tells us, amen, as we go forth, continue reading it, he says, and a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. I think it's interesting that the sheep not only knows the voice of God, but he says specifically, they don't even know the voice of strangers. <laughs> That's hard. If you really, I mean, in a day of a lot of competing voices, I feel you, God, tonight. In the day when everybody got something to say, everybody got an opinion, everybody got a plan, everybody wants to fill your ear with instruction, wants to fill your ear with direction. He says, my sheep know not the voice of strangers. Aren't even familiar, okay? Uh, and there's a whole lot more that we could probably dive into that concept of, of what it means uh, to, to, to know. Know means intimacy, all right? Um, and so uh, the voice of a stranger, stranger, foreigner, all right, someone who, amen, is uh, 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 at a distance, someone who's not in our company, all right? There's a mechanism that's locked in. There's a focus that the sheep has that they're able and have an ability to drown out erroneous direction and guidance. It's hard. It's hard, all right? There is sound and there is voice. Uh, there's a difference, okay? We hear a lot of sounds, okay? Uh, sounds that uh, at 7 o'clock in the morning when the kids alarm go off, that's a sound, okay? There's a relationship associated with that sound. Hear the sound, get up, you know, get cleaned up, you know, you shower if you need to shower, you know, brush your teeth, get ready, get your clothes on, make sure your lunch is together, and be out of my house, out of the doors, amen, 745, so that we ensure that you're at school at 8 o'clock. That's, that's the plan for the kids, all right? <laughs> that sound sends an alert, and that alert sends direction. But that, that sound is not a voice. Relationship is when I come walking down the voice, coming down the door, right? And my sound can be intimidating as I'm hitting the hardwood floor, you know, with my big feet, you know. Karen, why are you being so loud? Why are you being so loud? I get all the time for my wife, right? But when they hear my voice, I say, get up. <laughs> There's an authority that I have that the alarm clock doesn't have. I need y'all to hear this. There are sounds in life that give us cues, that give us, uh, that prompt us, that tell us to do this, to tell us to do that. I mean, there are sounds we have, the things that try to pull our attention, but there's a relationship in voice. My sheep know my voice. 
and another they will not follow. We already, go ahead, Sister Sylvia. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, you want to grab a mic just for those? <laughs> just for those on, at home. We have some folks in the sanctuary tonight. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, I was thinking, I made a joke that um, they can't snooze their father when you wake them up. No Come on snooze, now, but they can't snooze. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, I was thinking about some place that I heard that when um, the sheep and shepherds mm -hmm. are all gathered together, one shepherd will call the sheep, and they know how to discern the voice of that shepherd from among all the other shepherds, even though all the shepherds are congregated yeah. together. Yeah. Although there are a lot of figures of authority, <laughs> there is still a distinction in voice versus sound. Because we have a lot of people who have sounds of authority in our lives. Your boss has a sound of authority. Come on now. The police officer that pulled me over in Charlotte, Texas, or I mean in Charlotte, North Carolina, has a <laughs> okay, you can get the state right. <laughs> So that's how, how, how bothered I was by that. <laughs> I was on my way to preach. I said, I'm, on my, I'm a preacher. Here's my license. Here's my credentials. I'm on my way to preach. I'm late for church. <laughs> he still gave me a speeding ticket. Amen. I deserved it. Right? But he had a sound of authority. Them, them, whoop, 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 you know, them, them, uh, <laughs> them flashes, that sound, all right? A sound of authority, all right? But there's a voice of authority versus the sound of authority. And I think, Silver, you beautifully, you know, talked about that as far as when I come in the room, you know, my voice has an authority that they cannot snooze past, they can't ignore because of the expectation that's associated with my voice. And, and it takes years of them learning my voice. All right. To this very day, I can be at the, Holl at the, at the, at the Hollywood Bowl and can hear Beverly Shorter. <laughs> I, I promise. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I could be down at Staples Center, and I promise in a room full of 50,000 people going as loud as they can go, I'm pretty sure I, there's only one person who call my name. My wife can't call my name. My mom called my name. You know, <laughs> But there's a relationship with my wife now that I know how she calls my name. But mama, you know, there's a trigger there. All right? <laughs> so there's a voice of authority that comes with relationship with time spent. So my sheep, amen, although they hear other sounds, they know not the voice of strangers. And there's, again, there's a difference between sound and voice. Voice speaks to, amen, authority. Voice speaks to relationship, okay? Um, he goes on to tell them again, amen, that verily, verily, I say unto you that I am the door of the sheep. What are we? Amen. The church, the church, amen, is a place where the sheep come for, uh, uh, for cleaning, for direction, they come for 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 supper. They come for uh, 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 nutrition. They come for their wounds to be mended. They come for amen. All the things necessary for that they can go out and accomplish what their purpose is. They aren't sheep just to be sheep. They got to do something. All right, <laughs> they have to produce something. But he says, "I am the door of the sheep." He says, "And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers." <laughs> ah, that is such a powerful statement, considering everything that has come before him. Uh, the voices and, and the other relationship figures. He's really more or less speaking. He's not speaking about the prophets necessarily, because the prophets came in his name. They spoke of his name. He's speaking about those who are of the Pharisaic, those who are the Sadducees, those who are religious leaders who at the time have come and have done harm. He says, all the other voices that you've heard of authority, they're all robbers and thievers. They all have motives. Their motives weren't to secure you. Their motives weren't to, to bandage you up. Their motives were not, amen, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to mend you and mold you into purpose and to fully, first, uh, uh, fully uh, nourish you. He says, he says, all that came before me are thieves and robbers. He says, but the sheep did not hear them. <laughs> I am the door, the remnant, the remnant, the remnant did not pay any attention. The remnant were able to chew the, chew the, you know, the meat spit out the bones. They were able to delineate sound from voice, sound of authority versus voice of authority. He says, I am the door. He says, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Why is the church here? The church is here to be a door for those who desire to enter in, that they will receive salvation. 
He says, and shall go in and out and find pasture. <laughs> uh, I think it's interesting that in God, we think it's just a one-way door. Uh, the brilliance of God. He says they go in and out. Some people say, well, once you go in, it, and that's why there's a prison kind of complex associated with the church. God says in me, there's a liberty to go in and out and to find the pastures and for you to come in and out and to find success in all areas of your life. But you must come through the door. Know that I am the door. <laughs> uh, then he goes on to say that. He says they go out and they find pasture. He then goes on and says this in verse 10. The thief cometh not but to kill, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. This, ladies and gentlemen, speaks to a purpose of the church that deals with a holistic mindset that God desires for his people. God is not a one-trick pony. God is not just here, amen, for your salvation purposes. He also desires for you to move into abundance, the abundant living, because he has every aspect of not just your soul and mind, but also your natural mind as well, okay? So the, the, the function of the church is for us to, amen, instill the Christian life and to do so in a manner that is holistic, amen, that is, amen, everlasting to give you an introduction to what everlasting is. Eternal life is nearly, is not just merely life that goes on forever, but it's a different kind of life. It's the life that Jesus has branded. Jesus was not limited by what people think. Um, of certain, certain spiritual matters he wanted to demonstrate true life and the abundant life that he gives is holistic and applies to every area of our life that's God brilliance and success not just spiritually I don't want to regurgitate Sunday's message but it's not just amen um, edification spiritually it's being edified even as you're in relationship with people here on earth it's, it's in relationship in your home and relationship and successful success in your singlehood. It's success in your entrepreneurial endeavors. That's the balance that God brings and the holistic approach that he brings. Not just to bring you to a place where you come in, but that when you come in and you go out, you flourish in all areas and you find the pastures of success. The pastures of success, amen, not just spiritually, but the pastures of success that help you live the holistic life that someone would see you as the light and the city of the hill and say, I want that relationship for myself. <laughs> he doesn't save you to hide you. <laughs> he saves us to send us. God bless you. What's that? It's not how we're defining it. It's, it's, the, it's the metaphor that Jesus is using. It's the context of what he's using. Because we often say, I come that you might have life, life more abundantly. Don't read what happened before. And before, he's giving an example of those who come into the fold. And in doing so, he's talking about an empowerment associated with this life. An abundant life is a life without restriction. In Christ, it's a life that is not constricted or confounded. And so he's explaining to them that this very rare phenomenon of these sheep who in many cases feel like they're prisoners because, you know, you see, the, you know, sheep, they travel in packs and they don't go too far. And they, you know, for some people to the visual, it would appear as if they're constricted and stifled. But he says in him, there's in and out mechanism that flows in abundance that produces the holistic element associated with what it means to be in Christ. And so, you know, to, to answer your question, is it it's there are a lot of ways that one can interpret that. I'm giving that in the context of the relationship we see him as a good shepherd. All right. Because if you look at it from a relationship perspective, and, and maybe this is a great engagement for Bible study per perspective, what defines the good parent? Is a good parent just a parent that raises you, feeds you, and says you better be in my house before the street light comes on? Or is the parent, amen, that, amen, that, that we desire the parent that understands I'm putting some things in you because I know that you have to go out. And you going out, I want you to be just as successful in my home as you are when you go live 3,000 miles away. When you're on a boat 
and you're in the military and you're on the shore side of, of you know, Malaysia or wherever they may be embarked at, you know, uh, on your seven seas tours. You know what I'm saying? That's what we see here in scripture. He's saying that there's an empowerment in living in me that I'm equipping you that when you're in my wheel, not only are you saved, all right, and are now a candidate for everlasting life. He says, in me, there is no, no, no futile thought. There is no futile living. There is an opportunity for you now to take and to go and to fulfill the mission and purpose. And that is for me to raise you to a place so that you can be the greatest impact you can to the world. That's how we define even, and that's how a good father, you know, is represented. So he's saying, I'm the good shepherd. And, you know, he, he's given instruction that when I give direction and guidance to my sheep, they know my voice so much that when they do go, they won't get caught up in all the other stuff because they know my voice. There's a sensitivity. So he's opening up this, in this master class that he's attempting to teach, and in these parables that he's attempting to teach, he's opening up his you know, canvas for all those who are to come to really have a better understanding of what the Christian life is all about. Because up until this point, Jesus is now adversarial to those who are teaching during the day. Because you have those Sadducees and Pharisees and above all those scribes that say, this is how you do it. And if you don't do it to the T, you aren't saved. There's a legalistic approach that Jesus is counteracting in his teaching because again there is this big bad e I don't even say evil there's this big bad God syndrome that a lot of people have that fears the mentor relationship with God and that's not abundant life abundant life was never meant for us to be constricted abundant life relationship with God was never for us to be confounded now mind you there are expectations he has so there are certain things that I don't do in life because that was the expectation in my home. Somebody talk to me. Come on now. Don't, don't leave me out here by myself. There's some things that I just, you know, <laughs> don't do. You know what I mean? I go to the people's house, you know what I'm saying? And I try not to eat them out of house and home because that's one thing that I was taught, <laughs> you know, growing up, all right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. No, ma no, sir. You know what I'm saying? All those kind of things are things that were instilled upon me that I can still hear the sound of, of, or the voice of authority from my parents, even in areas that I know, you know, and I've been out of my parents' house now for, you know, for a long time. Amen. So probably live now more on my own than I have with them. Amen. But there's still some triggers and some traumas <laughs> and, some, and some lessons learned, all right? <laughs> and some disciplines and some rod of corrections and some things that were placed in me in my adolescence that shaped me, amen, even though I'm no longer there. And I'm still flourishing as I go in and out. So when I come back for, for holidays, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, I have the same empowerment in him as I am when I'm away from them. And so when we try to define the abundant life, it's not restricted necessarily to what, what one image is because Jesus is clearly speaking to a revolt of people who are not comfortable with Jesus coming to say, come unto me, all you that labor, you know, come, you know, uh, he, he's, he's, he's counteracting the misconceptions of the relationship that people have had for centuries concerning God because he's God manifest in flesh. And it's so deep because this is the God that framed everything, shaped everything. There are no co-creators in creation. There is all the, you know, and I don't mean to get off on the deep end concerning, you know, the Trinity and all that kind of stuff like that. But nevertheless, how could there be co-creators? John says, as he opens the book, everything that was made was made by him. Amen. He's in the world reconciling the world unto himself. So this is the God of the world wrapped in flesh, teaching a whole different construct of what we've been confounded about for years. And we're still mesmerized about even though he's come, died and given us the Holy Ghost. And we're still trapped in what that means because we believe we have to hide success. Mm. We believe here on earth that we are prisoners to servitude. When the scripture tells us the liberal soul shall be made fat. The scripture tells us, you know, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You know. So the abundant life is not just something that we are waiting for someday, you know, or waiting for any day. The abundant life is what he impresses all in his world for us to have. 
the wealth of the wicked, everything that you want to say concerning that prosperity all encompasses the abundant life. And it's not just limited to money and success. It's, it's mental health, emotional stability. It's relationships. It's success in areas and arenas that we did not ever anticipate. All of these things encompass a life that's in Jesus. So, you know, so I don't want to be kind of one note <laughs> necessarily with, because it's, it's a very fascinating you know, thought of what the abundant life really is and what that necessarily means because there are some people, I was, I was just, wow, this is so brilliant. Thank you for triggering me. I was having a conversation uh, with my brother last night. Um, we were talking just in general. We were uh, sharing a story about someone that we knew and, you know, we were talking about how we want to push people for greater, push people for greater. And I was telling him, I said, I was like, I was like, yeah, I said, my whole mentality has shifted, you know, since I've been pastoring. Because now I have to learn to appreciate where people are. Amen. But also challenge them for there's more. Oh, yeah. Amen. Mm, because if you're not careful, you won't celebrate what you've already overcome. You will minimize where you are because you're in comparison to where somebody else is and assume that you aren't in the abundant life. I said, Kev, I, said, I didn't get that until I started pastoring. I said, it isn't until I sat down with people who feel so like I have, I have accomplished nothing. I said, what do you mean you haven't accomplished nothing? You survived South Central Los Angeles. You've overcome this. You've overcome that. You've overcome a nervous breakdown. In the environment that you grew up in, there's people who, you know, are still on skid row. So you have to reposition what that means because in Christ there's sufficiency and in Christ there is abundance. But nevertheless as well, there's also that push that there's even exceeding and abundantly and above all we can ask or think that's, that does not relegate God because there's not a God that we serve that does less and less. There's a God that says in me and out of me and, and through the door when you come home and when you flourish and when I send you to corporate America and when I send you to you know the military or if I send you to City Hall or if I send you uh, just to be a, a, a community activist, wherever it is, I'm with you. And in me, there is an ability to have holistic, amen, uh, uh, somberness, holistic mission, holistic success. It's all tied in him. Amen. So uh, it's, you know, because because I want us to get delivered from that, delivered from comparison. Ah, it's easy to compare, you know, our plight with someone else and and and, and to get discouraged or to also get the big head. <laughs> because you can have all of that and not have the abundant life. You can have, you know, the six-figure job. You can have a nice home. You can have all these things and still not live in the, abundant, in the abundance of what the scripture says. So it's not just limited to, to stuff. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, so the reason why I want to talk about this is because I have been trying to study this myself. And um, the insight just as it is not clear to me because, you know, are we, are we measuring the abundant life as being victorious, Right, in all of our settings, even in our possible afflictions and trials, mm -hmm. is that abundant living? Or as I think I'm gleaning a little bit today, abundant living could be uh, being fruitful as in Christ as the Lord sees it mm -hmm. in every area of your life. Yeah. That could be uh, abundant living, right? Absolutely. Okay. Was, Paul, was Paul not living the abundant life when there's a thorn in his side? Look at it through the lens. He's just as abundant, you know, <laughs> but he's afflicted. Amen. Jesus, and, and, and it's beautiful that we're dealing with the sheep element because if you go to Psalms 23, the shadow of death lurks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and all those things that make up that beautiful, you know, psalm that we love. Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me. All those things. I mean, he prepares a table from present. My all those things are, you know, a table in the present in, enemy. Is, is a phenomenon in the midst of all the strife you have to get to to sit at the table when you consider it, you know. So there's a lot of elements associated. The abundant life does not free us from living in this flesh. <laughs> but there is an abundant perspective in pain. 
an abundant perspective in, in, in things that would bring other people despair and a lack of hope. And so on our journey as we follow Christ and we're in him and we recognize his voice, we have to trust all the paths that he takes, takes us through, all the challenges that are there. He has a plan for success. And above all, if we do it his way, we come to know what? That God's way, right, is the right way. God's way, what, is the only way. <laughs> and then above all, we come to recognize that God's way, what, is the easy way. Amen. We're measuring abundance in conclusions, Mr. Sylvia. We're measuring abundance, and I think you're saying, I'm just trying to clarify yeah. agree, how the Lord measures abundance. Oh, yeah. Amen. Right? So this is why you were saying, you know, we can go in and out. He instills mm -hmm. things in us. Yeah. You know, we live that life according to what he's instilled in mm -hmm. us. And if we're, if we're living it that way, then we're living the abundant life, even though in the world view, mm -hmm. it may not look like we're living abundant. Oh, yeah. Right? Like in pain and our suffering. Right. How we can glorify God in that because in our pain and our suffering, God is pouring an insight in, yeah. you know, yeah. revelation yeah. and things like that mm -hmm. to equip us for future battles. Yeah. And so, for example, that is abundant living. Right. Amen. 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 Because, uh, ain't it beautiful, y'all? Yeah. Give God a hand for it. <laughs> because when you, when you consider it, and, I, and I'm moving, I promise. When you consider what his, who, who, where is his right hand? Where is his left hand? How do you measure abundance in God? A God that has everything. Who can search his understanding? His thoughts higher than ours. We, we don't even scratch the surface of what abundance means in God. Amen. We're still in a progressive form of revelation. And, and we're the envy of the world. Amen. There are people who would trade places with you in a heartbeat. If they had that peace you have in your struggle. Because in your struggle, you still are living the abundant life. And they don't quite understand how you have sanity in the midst of them having to do this and rob, rob Peter to pay Paul and have to compromise their integrity. They wish they, wish they had an insight that you have concerning the abundant life. <laughs> in a different, whole different perspective. <laughs> in conclusion, a whole different perspective. But a sensitivity... Because it's a sensitivity. It's a hearkening to the voice of God. You have to be, you have to be his to even know, <laughs> to even know this. Ah, God. <laughs> to even enter in, you have to have an awareness of his voice to receive uh, this abundance. And so this is what he, he goes on to say. He says, yeah, I come that you might. So the purpose and mission of the church is to help in the refinement and the development. Amen. So that you would understand that Jesus, when he walked here, practiced the abundant life, this abundant life in, 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 in as a plain clothes, <laughs> right? But he lived a life visible for everyone. Um, it, it, it substituted, amen, the self-grandizement of a figure as him, and it, and it, and it shifted from exaltation of him because his, he would be exalted, amen, when, it, when his time came and would bring about salvation. But he sacrificed personal exaltation for, self, for selflessness amen. and for service. Yes, amen. <laughs> uh, amen. What, a, what a thought that the God of all creation, yeah. who gets praise from birds, yeah. Who gets, uh, gets praise from the breeze, gets praise, amen, as the seashores, as the, as, as the waves crash up against, amen, the seas. Who gets waves? He gets praise from us in our worship services. He gets a praise 24-7 because somewhere in the world at any time somebody's lifting up a praise, amen. comes to earth and has to deal with ridicule amen. and criticism amen. and has to deal with, with being heckled. And doubted <laughs> a God of all security with no insecurity who counsels with no one <laughs> knows the end from the beginning I mean he's a he's a either he's a bad God or he's not I'm just thinking to myself how God how brilliant he is 
knows the hair numbered on every head. All wisdom, all brilliance has to come down to earth and argue with somebody about who he is. <laughs> You know how crazy that is when I, I was talking to my brother last night about this about growing up because we don't look like twins. We always had to used to carry our IDs to show people we were twins. So <laughs> could you imagine Jesus being car checked? <laughs> you know, like I am God. Like, what is there to argue about? I know who I am, but I have not yet reached a place of progressive revelation that you can hear to follow. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, and what the challenge was is I see you, but I'm not hearing you. I see the miracles, but I ain't hearing you, homie. And that puts up a wall, amen, that won't allow people to enter into the door. So the gates of their eyes stifle their ability to trust and believe because uh, he's here walking in flesh and blood and he still has to prove himself. Amen. Although he knows who he is. Amen. Uh, I'm off of it. <laughs> but yeah, he trades the life of grandizement. Amen. For personal sacrifice and humility. And, and that's what it is. Too many too often the church wants to be celebrated for being the church instead of being the servants and uh, the service institution that it is. When he came to earth, he blessed people, said, don't tell nobody. I did this. <laughs> Here's a little money in your pocket. Don't tell nobody. Here's a healing. <laughs> Here's, you know, you know, go about your business. Send no more. You know, here's your sight back. I mean, like it's no big deal. Come on, y'all. I mean, this, I'm just, I'd be tripping out sometimes when I read the scripture. I'd be like, Lord, you just put somebody's whole, <laughs> put somebody's whole life back together again. And they try to thank you and they want to tell everybody you say, don't tell nobody. <laughs> I'm, the Lord, the Lord put twenty dollars in my pocket. I want to tell everybody. I'm calling, <laughs> I'm telling. <laughs> uh, so, nevertheless, it's 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 the posture of the church. Our mission, Amen, moves from being celebrated, Amen, to being servants. And we see this all as Jesus washes the feet, uh, the feet of his um of his disciples. If we keep reading here in John 15, his last example of the abundant life applies, amen, to a form of service. What's the abundant life? The abundant life for us is service. That's right. Amen. <laughs> amen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's success, but it's also the service element. Here Jesus is. If we should be you know, <laughs> don't, don't, don't get mad at me. I watch way too much coming to America, but I swear I know I'm about it. But the rose bears, right? <laughs> the rose petals. <laughs> uh, I mean, throwing roses at the feet of royalty should have been the life that he lived. And here this man is, this black man is on his knees, you know, washing the feet of, that's his last act here on earth. To show you that the abundant life is always a life of service. Ah, help us, help us, help us. Success and service. Conversion and contrition. Christ is, amen, community oriented. And, by, and what I mean by that, his reconciling gospel is for us to go, to go to go. Let's go to Colossians 2 and 15. I, I didn't, wasn't planning on going here, but let's go Colossians real quick just so that we have a little bit more of this. Hallelujah. I hope I, I, hope I wrote that down right. Yeah, am I telling you to go there? Yeah. Book of Colossians chapter number 2. Let's start at verse number 6. I was ministering from this the other night. Um, As ye therefore... As, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Huh. <laughs> Rooted and built up and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. You want to understand what the instruction and mission of the church is. It is a church that walks in him, not around him, not beside him, amen, not according to a pattern. Walk ye in him. His instruction to the church. <laughs> Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith as ye have been taught, always abounding therein in thankfulness. We as a church must always remain rooted. We must always remain in a posture to be built up in him, 
We must continue to be established by our faith. As our faith expands, amen, so does our posture because he establishes us from faith to faith. When we go from faith to faith and we're positioned to another level, there's a new establishment. There's a new, amen, <laughs> level that he adds. And those new levels brings a new area for us to be even more anchored and, st and stable. He says, as we have been taught, all right, the teaching is to go forth in the church. And more importantly, the always abounding is, amen, a spirit of thanksgiving in our hearts. That's the church. The church has to be an institution of thanksgiving unto God. Verse number eight says, beware lest any man spoil through through philosophy and vain deceit. The church has to be an institution, amen, that is willing to stand against the philosophy of the day. This is very interesting during a time when the Apostle Paul, if you just take him and put some of the things he sets up, you could put his words up against a Plato and Aristotle and all of these great brilliant minds of the time that were talking in the area of, 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 of Rome and all this wonderful wisdom and Greek philosophy and all this kind of stuff. We're in the same period where if you're not careful, you will think that the things that Paul is teaching is just great stuff to live by. It's just beautifully executed, amen, uh, 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 you know, revelations or whatever you want to call, call it. It's the word of God. Amen. He says, be careful lest these people who, amen, have these deep philosophies. That's the time in which we live. It's a lot of philosophy and not the word of God. He says, be careful lest you're spoiled from the word of God because of someone's opinion. Amen. <laughs> ah. He says, and vain deceit. There's a difference too. There are going to be some people, it's their personal opinion. There's going to be some people who are out just to deceive the church. So the institution has to stand. He says, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. Huh? Not after Christ. He says, for in him dwelleth what? All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. <laughs> and what? Ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power verse number 11 says in whom you also are circumcised with the circumcision uh, made without hands and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by circumcision of Christ again Old Testament the only way you could be identified in the church we're calling the children of Israelites the church right because that's the first one who received salvation of the Lord the Israelites received salvation they were pulled up out of Egypt. They were saved. How were they saved? How did you know they were on the Lord's side? Through circumcision, the cutting away. How was the church? The church, the church is a church through circumcision, through Jesus Christ. We are cut away from the world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Buried with him in baptism, wherein you also are risen with him, right, through faith of the operation of God who raised him up from the dead. Verse 13 says, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him. <laughs> uh, like the jittering, the quickening, all right, together with him, having forgiven you what all trespasses, blotting out. The handwriting of ordinances that was against us. The scripture tells us, amen, um, that uh, there's one scripture talks about how, amen, when we sin against God, we're bl uh, there's a blotting that happens on the roll in heaven, all right? So here, amen, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances against us speaks to the very laws that are written. You did this. You did that. You did this. You did this. You cussed. You this. You this. You know, you look somebody wrong. You didn't do this. All right. There's a laundry list of things that, amen, the enemy will hold over us as trespasses against God because the devil knows the word of God too. So the devil knows what sin is. So he sits there with a little cheat sheet, holding out everything you did. Oh, you sucked your teeth. Oh, you didn't love. Oh, you didn't smile. Oh, you didn't do this. And he has this whole laundry list of things. As long as this wall is, all little things you did, because he stays marking. He stays, he can't quite keep up. But it's enough for you to stay in your mind a prisoner to stuff God has forgiven you for. That's why you're still living 15 years and you've been free since you've been in the blood. But you still think somebody got some over your head. He says he blots them out. So he blots them. He takes that, amen, that white out, that good old white out, all right? <laughs> And back in the day, we used to have typewriters. You know, I was just telling my brother about this. About we was like the last family on the block to get a computer. We did our homework on the typewriters, and we used to have a little, the little thing when you made a mistake to correct. To write it out, right? But he blots out. He blots out. Amen. Those things that the enemy has over us. 
the handwriting of the ordinance against us, which was contrary to us, and took it away. What did he do? Nailing it to the cross. <laughs> and having spoiled principalities and powers, when he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Ah, uh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Making now a new humanity, making now a new culture. This is what the church is, all right? We are now, amen, and amen. He is so community oriented that he left outside of just the Israelites to go out to the world and say, not only do they need a savior, we all need a savior. Help us tonight. Hallelujah. So when we act as the church toward one another, when we operate as the church, what are we doing? We display the full gracious and redemptive reign of Jesus, amen, as he did over the principalities and heirs of the world. Amen. When you forgive, amen. <laughs> when you look past, when you give, amen, a second chance, when you give grace, ah, you operate in, in the redemptive reign of Jesus Christ. As he nails all of our transgressions to a tree. <laughs> Hallelujah. As Jesus' redemptive reign breaks into this world, the church grows in the full stature of Christ. That's our goal. That's our responsibility. And God is glorified by our faith, which is expressed by these acts of love to other people. All right. Um, the scripture tells us repeatedly, for without faith, it is impossible, amen, to please God. So everything that we do, our expressions of love, those are expressions, amen, that, amen, they fortify our faith. You can't love and not have faith. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Difficult, right? Mm -hmm. To my love is blind. No, 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 it's not. Love is faith. It's a faith journey. Uh, okay. <laughs> when you stand for the aisle, <laughs> that's faith. I'm putting my life in your hand for better or worse. And sometimes with no expectation. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. It's a faith you have to love on someone knowing that God is going to help me. Amen. As I'm showing love to you. That even if you don't reciprocate what I'm giving out. God will honor my life. It takes faith to love. Because you will stop loving if you, if you only love anticipating something back. Oh, you're going to always be miserable. You're going to always be cantankerous. You're going to always be empty. Because no one can ever love you quite to the level and measure <laughs> that God can. And so with you, amen, is, a, is an element of faith that God gives you in your demonstration of love to one another. It's a faith that you have without expectation. There's a love that you have without expectation. And that's what our charge is. Amen. It's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to love. Amen. In a, in a manner that pleases God without faith. <laughs> uh, and and, and uh, write this down for your own for your own and just circle this. Just go home and read Romans 14 and 23. I just want you to get that in your spirit so that you start looking at faith differently. I know we like to say the opposite of faith is fear, you know, but the opposite of faith is sin. Whatever is not faith is sin. That's what the scripture says. Uh, and and I will hopefully one day be able to really break that down and give you <laughs> the real the real way to that. But in your own de devotion, study that for yourself and, and we'll see what conclusions you can draw from that. Because sometimes, Romans 14 and 23, sometimes it's difficult, amen, for us to see, amen, how our lack of faith is an offense to God. So when we don't love, that's sin. <laughs> because we're not exercising faith. Uh, okay, okay. Amen. Help us tonight, all right. <laughs> Genuine faith always expresses itself in obedience to God. Um, and, and our genuine faith and true obedience to God is expressed in our love to God and other people. Let's go to the book of... Jane. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, so you're saying that, that um, we don't have faith, 
Yes. As the scripture says, <laughs> Romans 14 and, and 23 speaks to that, that wherever there is no faith, there is sin. And in, in, in part of that is, um, part of that is most of our sin is a lack of something. So just, just go with me for a quick, quick moment. All right. <laughs> if you, if you look at every avenue of sin, let's just look at anger, right? For example, right? To be angry, I'm mad, I'm, you know, that anger, okay? It's because there's an absence of faith that God is justice. And I know that's a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> Why are you so upset about it? Because you have internalized this justice and have said that God is not a God of justice. So what is the default? It's an anger, and that anger produces a sin in us, and it has us cussing, it has us throwing hands, it has us acting out, it has us, you know, putting a breach in front of the people, and all it really is is a lack of faith in God Amen. that he will vindicate, yeah. that he will make right. And I, I know, but it's, it's every area. We could talk about infidelity. Infidelity is a lack of faith that what God that, that God can't preserve you in your singleness, or that what God has not given you is, 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 is that God has given you is not sufficient. It takes faith to believe that everything I need and to support my mission on earth is tied to the woman, amen, who I pulled up, amen, out of her father's house and yoked. And so when I step out of the bounds of my marriage, it's a, it's a lack of faith that God, uh, or what I'm saying is, is that I guess I don't have a good thing. Right? And I'm living a life that contradicts my faith in God, that what he gives me is sufficient. Amen. So most of what it is that we have comes from fornication, lack of faith. I know we don't. I know we don't sometimes see it that way, but but be challenged of, you know, that sometimes, and, and of course, now we can always say that opposite of faith is fear. There's a fear, or I'm missing out on something, the fear of, you know, but there's an element associated within the book of Romans 14 and 23 that speaks to that whenever we don't have faith, amen, we have that, that, that vulnerability to sin. That the opposite of it really is sin. Having faith in God, all right? Um, and not, not having faith in God produces a sin. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking of like fear um, of financial insecurity. Mm -hmm. You may cheat on your taxes or lie mm -hmm. because you don't have faith. I hope you can hear me. That yeah. the Lord will take care of you no matter what. Mm -hmm. That you know you haven't seen anyone go hungry. You know, for those who love the Lord and follow Him. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's one example. Right, I'm trying to right. Think of other examples. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to really be thinking about the <laughs> to, to, but I'm pretty sure if you examine all the sins that we have, we're not just talking about the big sins. You know, there's some sins that we do that nobody knows about. And when we trace it down, what leads us to that, leads us to that is that there is something that's luring us away from faith in God. So that's a great example, you know, with with taxes or with things of that nature, you know, um, uh, there are deficiencies that we don't believe that God will, 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 will cover us. And so cause us, you know, I'm not saying, you know, there are certain things that I believe is not cheating. It's just, there's some people who know the tax code better than others. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause some people be getting right on, right on. <laughs> it's about getting more educated, but there are some people who do like, you know, you don't got, you know, you don't got all these dependents. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, I believe that when you first come to Christ, you have to have, like you said, a relationship mm -hmm. so that you can begin to trust that God is gonna yeah. take care of you. Yeah, because as she was saying, like back in the day, I was in the world, so yeah. I had to keep sack. You know, yeah. But when I got saved, I had to give that up mm -hmm. and be able to trust God. And mm -hmm. sometimes the enemy will put in your mind, oh, you was doing better over here. Right. You know what I mean? 
So I had to say, Lord, I trust you. Mm -hmm. And like, and I'm just reading the scripture. When you don't believe that God can work it out for you, that is a sin because I'm taking it back into my hands and not um, truly giving it to God. Yeah. To take care of me. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, there's so many different ways that you can, you know, um, but that's a beautiful thing because in in this walk we will sin, Amen. and in in this walk even after the blood we're gonna sin. Amen. Man, think he? <laughs> that's the first thing is is you have faith in your flesh Amen. when the scripture tells you <laughs> that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, so like, okay, so I have faith in God, but But then she left me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, God, I showed you I can do this. Mm -hmm. Then, mm -hmm. why is this happening again? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if it's, I don't want to see and not have faith. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I don't understand. Yeah. Well, they're different. That's a different kind of situation. Um, there is at times, yeah, there are at times when we try to make the way. That's the sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the challenges that we come up with, the things that we come in, sometimes they're part of God's will. And so it's having faith in God's will. You know what I'm saying? And so when we try to undo God's will, we'll find ourselves in a whole mess. How many of us have done that before? God said one thing and I was going to make my own way and I found myself in a deeper ditch. You know, so my faith is in God is that he is going to take care of it. My faith in God is that he is going to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. 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 But you know what though? It's all a part of, that's why the Bible tells us that we go from faith to faith Amen. and glory to glory. And in our spiritual journey, when we first start getting saved, our faith is right here. So we make mistakes, we stumble. Many of us went down in the water and went out and had a cigarette because it's, it's still a part of the journey. Then the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you and you start believing and consecrating and building a voice and developing that voice. And, you know, you go from faith to faith and you begin to grow and process. And, and that's what it comes to. What happens sometimes in the church is some of us never, we've been saved 30 years and we still here. <laughs> we ain't trying to go there. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I was just thinking, in regards to what the young lady said, that this walk, we have to learn that voice. Yeah. And I was thinking about Samuel. Yeah. He didn't know the voice of God. He had to learn. He had to develop, mm -hmm. you know, an ear to to be familiar with that voice. Mm -hmm. And so once you get familiar with it, then your path can become much easier. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes, still knowing that voice, sometimes we can't steer off. But it's there's a development that has to take place. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Praise Lord. And the key I was thinking to to piggyback off what Sister Nikita was saying was. You actually said it in the beginning of the lesson when you said no equals intimacy. So it's a continuation in intimacy with God that will help you to develop and know his voice in all situations. Amen. 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 And, 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 and I, the minute you were talking about it, I went right to the book of John, First John chapter number one, when he talks about this, that God is light in him. There's no darkness at all. And if I say, if we, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. We do not and do not the truth but if we walk in the light he is the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus um uh, christ his son cleanses cleanses us uh, from all sin and so he goes on to say if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us so that speaks to as well the whole idea that we literally are living by faith and the moment we think that we can't do it without god we open the door for the enemy to come in with us, that's most of our sin is manufactured by our lack of faith in God. Amen. I'm telling you, I got some stories <laughs> of how I was going to fit the circle into a, a square plague. I, I was committed to it. 
And I thought I was in the will of God doing it because he wants me to be happy and he wants me to have the abundant life and he wants all, <laughs> and I'm just going to force my way into something that God is not saying. And so, you know, the, the, the scriptures tell us that we deceive ourselves if we think for one moment that there's not an element in us that wants to, to be contrary to God. That's what this flesh is all about. That's why it's a daily sacrifice. It's a daily purging. It's a daily come out from among them. It's a daily I want to walk in the light. And as Sister Nikita was saying, and as Steve's Monica was saying, you know, as you train your voice to hear from God, because listen, Samuel was in the house of God and didn't hear that, didn't hear God. Samuel was working for God, didn't hear God. Samuel was was touching the sacred things and didn't hear God. Samuel had an ephod. And didn't hear God. Year after year he got it. And he didn't hear God until he heard God. And when he heard God, you couldn't tell him anything else. Because he knew it was God. <laughs> That's why he told Jesse, I'm not leaving this house. Because I heard God. <laughs> I, and I know there's another son up in here. I know what I heard. I had to fight to hear this. Amen. And when you, when you hear it, it's a fight to keep hearing it. Amen. Because that's the journey even out there in TV land. That's the fight for some of us is to keep hearing God. Because there's all kind of sounds. Let's go back circle, full circle. <laughs> Trying to come in and to mess with our hearing. But faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so as you grow in God, we grow from faith to faith and we begin to mature. And, and when we begin to mature, we start learning. You know what? You know, I, I love that, that, that depiction of Ezekiel. When Ezekiel talks about the line from the from the from the shore, and when I got out to the got out there, it got to my ankles, and then it got to my knees, and then to my loins, and then he says, when I got all the way in the water, the water took over me, so to the point that I had no choice to stop resisting the current. I had to go with the current. That's what our journey is for some of us. That faith to faith is getting to a place where we can let go and have faith and confidence and trust in God. Amen. It's one of my favorite texts in the whole Bible. I mean, to consider him getting to a place where he says, I tried to swim and I could no longer swim. All I could do was just go with the flow. <laughs> because some of us will get to this level and still be trying to fight, trying to make our way. You can get to this level, get all the way in God and still be trying to fight and still try to prove and how the last word and see I'm right and all that kind of stuff. You have to get to a place in your walk where you're okay with wherever he shifts you. Wherever the direction of God is, I'm willing to go. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is Nikita. <laughs> and twice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but add, add, but add the, but add the last part. Yeah. But add, but add the last clause. Add the last clause. Power belongeth to God. So as you hear, you revive in your spirit to know power. Faith cometh by hearing. So twice have I heard it. And what is the decree? Power belongeth to God. And everything I'm facing, power belongs. This is so good. I got to stop tonight, y'all. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. So even though I'm facing challenge, I heard God said he'll make a way. And I believe all power belongs to God. Ah, no. For myself, and you can't shake my what I heard. <laughs> he said he'll fight for me. He said he would deliver. He said he would bring my children back. He said he would protect them on the campus. I heard it for myself. All powers in his hand. And even when you go to another levels in life, even as you go from faith to faith, it's going to always be that part of you that wants to struggle with, do I really hear what I heard? <laughs> but you're going to have to learn to go with the current and be reinforced in what you heard. Amen. Uh, and have confidence that power belongs to God. When I recognize power belongs to him, strength belongs to him, deliverance belongs to him, healing belongs to him, I'll stop fighting and making, trying to make a way for myself that produces the sin. Because most of the sin is manufactured because we're trying to make a way because we keep forgetting that all power belongs to God. He's sovereign. It's his will is sufficient. He can blow on it if he wants to. And whatever my lot, I got to be well with it. 
<laughs> if he brings them back, ah, if he, if he reverses his course, I'm still going to praise him. I'm still going to trust him. I'm still going to yield to him. That's a place we all got to get to, Lord. However you want to do it. Ah, I just believe that all power is in your hand. I know you will make a way of escape in your time. You're going to work on my behalf, however you want to do it. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that, that that was piping in the soundtrack and the fire as the Hebrew boys say in the fire, if he don't deliver us, all power belongs to God. <laughs> Ah, if you leave me in here, oh God, if I never see the sun shine again on my situation, I have the confidence to walk, ha, ah, ah, ha, trusting that it's in his hand. And that's what faith does. Faith helps us remember how strong our God is. Ah, ah. Faith helps us remember how mighty our God is. Faith helps us remember he's never lost a battle. He's for us. Ah, he won't put more on us than we can bear. That's what faith comes to do. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I keep telling myself, I'm going to wrap this little... This little <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Faith and trust in God is finding our meaning and purpose and satisfaction in him and not in the things of this world. Thank you, Jesus. When you go home tonight, write these down because I've got to close. But uh, uh, Philippians 4, 10 and 13, finding meaning and purpose and satisfaction in him. So Philippians 4, uh, 10 through 13 as well as Hebrews 5 through 14 um, I want you to just study this with all those things because our faith and trust in God that helps us the church amen we are the church it helps us find our meaning and our purpose and satisfaction in him and not the stuff so again Philippians 4 uh, uh, 10 through 13 and the book of Hebrews uh, verses 5 through 14 Oh. oh, no, no, no. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13. I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 14. And the book of Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. Again, help us with that because it's all about when we're talking about purpose of the church. We have to know our meaning. We have to know our purpose. And most importantly, have to be content in him. God is glorified most, amen, when we are satisfied and sufficient in him. My God, that's why we, we were in, in Colossians chapter number two, amen, because that's, that whole uh, chapter speaks to our sufficiency in Christ Jesus, particularly, um, amen, not allowing ourselves to be jaded by the sound of the day, but us taking root and taking heart and, and what God has placed in us as believers. And so if we don't understand that our lives have meaning and have purpose and if we aren't satisfied in the sufficiency of Christ, then we're susceptible to finding meaning and purpose and sufficiency in other places. God desires for us to find all sufficiency in him. <laughs> and for us to really believe it. There's going to come a time in our walk with God and our faith. I speak this over you, young lady. You know, when it comes to our walk with God, that, our, that we will learn to be sufficient in him. Amen. Sufficient in his grace. Sufficient in the pain, you know, sufficient in and 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 what he brings to us, amen. What he takes away from us, amen, knowing that there's no lack in God. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, there's there's more, just in case I forget, amen. Uh <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna eventually get to our missions of the worship of God, amen, the discipleship of the believers, the mission of the unbelievers. And the unity of the church as the other four basic missions and purposes. So that's that's where I'm headed. All right. <laughs> May the Lord God bless you real good. Amen. To those of you watching at line, online. Amen. It's always rich in here. And um, you should you should mosey down here and join us. Amen. In the sanctuary. I can't promise. Amen. Uh, um, 
I'm still praying about what we, you know, to do as far as coming back. But when we say come eat, come eat. All right. <laughs> come to the household of, of faith and, and be encouraged. Um, and uh, looking forward again to uh, seeing how the Lord will help us journey. Um, uh, you know, again, um, be prayerful. I know we're getting ready to start. The con we were told that we're a couple weeks away from this con uh, construction effort that's happening here on this uh, Crenshaw uh, Street. They're going to be taking the whole street and redoing this whole mural thing here. And um, they told us we're a couple weeks away from getting the permit from Metro to start the construction. So that's why uh, we're still kind of waiting. But uh, we thank God that we have secured parking um, on Sundays uh, for those who can't park here and in the neighborhood over at Crenshaw High School. So we thank God for that. And uh, we'll be having the shuttle that can take you over. And you we'll have it armed and secured over across the street. So, <laughs> uh, so if you park there, you'll have peace of mind, you know. And so because I told them, I said, hey, look, you don't want nobody. You know how it is in L.A. Right. You, you drive around twice and you can't find nobody. You're going to stream, amen? <laughs> I said, we're not doing that, all right? <laughs> Give us some space to work with. So our, our thanks to Destination Crenshaw for working with us and partnering with us to make sure we have a secure place for our saints to park um, in the interim basis. So we're going to be over at Crenshaw High School. We're still working out all the things um, to get that up and going, but um, we'll have it set up. You will have, se we'll have security, just like we have in our parking lot in our areas over here walking. Um, and we'll have a shuttle bus that will do drop offs and and uh, drop you off in front of the church, and then we we'll take you back over, and we'll do a bunch of runs, as, you know. Uh, and hopefully we have something, maybe have a hotline set up or walkie-talkie situation set up where, you know, uh, we can make sure that people that need a ride can get over here. But I don't want us to lose any momentum. Amen. Keep inviting people. We're going to take care of them. All right. We're going to make sure they have a wonderful worship experience. And I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. 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 God bless you. This is Lena, what you got to say, man? <laughs> dinner in there, mm -hmm. and I came, and then I was thinking about Jesus in you. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Did you enjoy the dinner the last time? <laughs> so we're going gonna, gonna, gonna to eat again, all right? <laughs> Not tonight. Not tonight, but it's... We're going to put some more fellowships together. I enjoyed that, too, getting a chance to eat with all the saints. So, Amen. Especially when we have you out during your, your evening time, uh, dinner time. So, God bless everybody. I'm having myself, Lady Shorter. We say God bless you. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Thank you, O oh God, for being reminded that you endeavor us to know your voice, O oh God. That faith coming by hearing, O oh God, and that you desire, O oh God, for us to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. I pray, O oh God, tonight that something was said to stir our heart, O oh God, that we would understand the mission and purpose of the church. I pray, O oh God, you will continue to illuminate. I pray, O oh God, that you will continue to bring encouragement. I mean, to my dear sister, O oh God, who's dealing with challenges and trials, O oh God, we speak victory over her, over all of the saints in the house tonight. We speak victory. Whatever state we may be in, O oh God, pressed, O oh God, we're still in the abundant life. Afflicted, we're still in the abundant life, O oh God. Ah, whether we're on in the corporate arena, O oh God, or working in the community or at home, O oh God, you still allow us, O oh God, to live the abundant life. And we celebrate you and we praise you, O oh God, because we have victory tonight and our confidence is in you, Oh God, that you will make a way of escape. Bless this word, hide in our hearts, that we sin out against you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen and amen. 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 For those that want to give, amen online, amen. We have our ways of giving uh, a dollar sign, Bethesda Temple LA. Um, and of course, uh, we have PayPal. Um, I forget what all the handles and stuff are, but uh, you put it in there. Okay, it's posted right there in the comment section. So be a giver tonight and join and celebrate with us in giving. Those in the sanctuary, if you want to give, you can. We have credit card machine in the back if you want to give something tonight. Amen. Via that method. Uh, but everybody giving tonight, if you've been blessed tonight, amen. We're believing God for great things and trusting him for overthrowing our lives. And amen. I just believe that favor is coming to each and every one of us as we endeavor, amen, to do the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to pray over the offering as well as pray a prayer of dismissal. Amen. Amen. And again, to all those watching at home, again, we say God bless you. Thanks for being with us. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, your compassion. Thank you for being in our midst. We pray that you give us traveling grace and mercies. We pray, oh God, that this word will stimulate us, oh God, be hidden in our heart, oh God, that we learn to appreciate you, God, wherever you have us, oh God, that we know we're in the abundant life, oh God. Hallelujah. To come in and out, oh God, how that you have provided pastures for us, oh God, and that you will not allow us to fail. We'll find good success and we'll find, oh God, the contentment, oh God, and sufficiency in your will. In wherever area you have us in life, oh God, we will yet trust you and yet praise you and give you all glory. Take us back to our homes and our boats safely. Bring us back at the appointed time and I praise our heart unto you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. May the Lord God bless you real good in Jesus' name.